Ho, 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 all, and a Merry Christmas to you. This is the Christmas present I have decided to give you all today. Uh, this video will be coming out on Christmas. I'm recording it, obviously, in advance. I can't record these things or put these things out live because it's just too much effort and whatnot. But, hey, I hope you all are having a nice Christmas. I am, record, as I said, recording this a little bit early, so this is a bit of a different one. We're going to do this a bit in a bit of a different way, but, hey, it is what it is, and I'm sure you all know what we're doing by the title and by the thumbnail and by what you see on screen. Anyway, we are doing a pre-con upgrade to the Heads I Win, Tails You Lose uh, coin flipping deck. Now... There's some very cool cards, obviously, in this deck and some very key cards to this deck. Uh, and there are some very fun cards in this deck list as well. So it, it is got a whole lot going on for it. So it will be a bit of work uh, to fiddle with this deck and to figure out what I'm going to do with this deck. Because this is a, a very interesting sort of style of strategy, to say the least. It's going to be a heck of a lot of work for me to figure it out and whatnot. But hey, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to go over to Architect and plug this deck in and see what I can come up with for a special holiday gift for you all. If you're enjoying the content here, you can join the Squirrel Army by subscribing. Alrighty, guys. So here we are back at the list and I'm just checking that we've got a hundred cards which we do which is good and we can see how much our price is at so that's pretty pretty good from um, the listing and not too much of a of a budget here um, between 30 and 50 dollars or so depends on where you're getting some of these cards and whatnot so yeah not not a huge uh, chunk of change, but certainly there are better cars, some better cars that you could try to put in here as well. Uh, but I will just say with this deck, um, guys, if you want to check out the deck list for this deck without having to watch on through the waffle on that I'll go through in the rest of this deck, the deck list will be in pinned in the comments below. So if you just want to check out what's actually in the list. You can do that and check it out down there. If you still want to check it out and still want to listen through the waff line, you're more than welcome to. But I know some people don't really care and just want to see, okay, what do you suggest? Let's go. Copy this list. Let's go. Put it together. Um, but for those who are here, let's get going with it. I really didn't do much with the lands, and I will say this in, in every single one of these forever, that uh, the only lands that I really took out with bad mediocre tap lands and whatnot that I just were like, hmm, we could just do better or we could just have other things. I think there's one or two other ones that I'd left in because I was just like, oh, that's all right. At least it's consistently going to do something unlike something like Temple of False God, which ne I never see do anything. The one other change that it is a bit weird with this deck is that it has uh, in the deck list, I think, two... Uh, not Flamekin Village. Uh, not Spine right now. Where is it? Great. It has two copies of Great Furnace in the deck list. So I just took the Great Furnace out and just put Seat of the Synod uh, into its place uh, just to balance it out. I don't know why it's in the deck twice or Seat of the Synod wasn't in the deck. I don't even know why they're kind of in the deck, but then again, there's a few tutors for artifacts and whatnot, so maybe that's why I'm not too super duper sure, uh, but whatever. That is what it is. But anyway, let's go through what I took out, uh, and besides uh, just adding that, I only added a few basic lands to the deck list here. If you want to put in some more better uh, lands and whatnot, I think those people who know how to put it together a really good mana base or have an actual budget to put a good mana base together will know what to kind of put in. And again, if you don't have the budget for this uh, kind of mana base, which comes in the pre-con anyway, which is a bit weird, but whatever, if you don't have the budget for this kind of mana base and you're just kind of building it from scratch, um, 
don't worry too much about it. Just basically fill it mostly with, you know, your basic lands uh, and whatnot because they'll do just as good of a job most of the time. Um, the only ones that are super duper, like, key perhaps are maybe Academy Ruins um, and a couple of the other ones, like, here and there. But it is what it is. Anyway, we'll go through what I cut first and then we'll cut uh, to go to what I added. And I didn't add that many things because didn't really cut that many things either. But Derevi... I don't mind Derevi, but I'm not huge on Planeswalkers anyway, and he's not really on theme with what we're trying to do. Like, we could do some artifact shenanigans, and we do have some artifacts in this deck, but I don't, don't really see what we're really doing with it. Like, we're not an artifacts deck, really. Like, we have some artifacts, as I said, but... And there are some that we really do want and really do need. But I just don't think that this adds to our game plan. So I just took it out. Embercleave, I think this is really good in certain circumstances. But the thing I thought about this deck is we have usually one thing that swings, which is Okun, which is really big. He needs Trample for sure. He doesn't really need double strike, I don't think. He's already usually big enough most of the time to one-shot people, so he really doesn't need double strike. So we're really paying, you know, five mana for a, a flash trample effect. So we could find other ways to give our commander trample at instant speed and not for six mana, or we could just find other ways to get through damage or whatever and things like that. So I just didn't think it was worth our time. Plus there were so many other really good cards that I was just like, we need to fit this in somewhere. We need to fit this in somewhere. So I was just like, well, something's got to go. And this just, I didn't think much of. Uh, Gambit, not terrible, especially for the strategy. But I don't like these one-off effects. These one-off effects are always way worse than effects that you can get multiple multiple times even if it's once per turn or whatever um if we had ways to keep this under an artifact or whatever and keep playing it or whatever keep casting out an enchantment then that'd be good but we don't have that and i could have tried to add that sort of stuff but i don't know it's just another hoop to sort of go through when our deck is already pretty good at doing some of this stuff so we don't really need it. Uh, I'm going to talk about all these uh, cantrips, Ponder, Preordain, and Serum Visions all together um, because they all occupy the same thought for me. I don't really like these small one-off cantrips. Again, we're not a spell deck, and, like, they're good in a way, but, like, to help us find our things or whatever. But in the end, like, we could just run more specific card draw. And that's kind of where I got kind of a little bit stuck when I was actually putting this list together a little bit was maybe it needs a little bit more card draw. Uh, but then again, the commander is a lot of card draw as soon as you start getting, you know, it going and whatnot. So I don't know, maybe we just need more of our commander to be doing more of what our commander does. So I don't know. That's just where I thought we were at. I don't really think we need these. If we need to keep digging to find things then we might as well just have tutors rather than this slip through space it's nice for okun to be unblockable but there's a few ways to give him unblockable in this deck already and i just don't think we need this one-off type of an effect we don't really need it it just doesn't do enough um the revenge like i said i don't like these one-off effects um it, 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 like, taking um, uh, the card draw with this one, we can get a lot of cards for three mana. So, but, again, I just think getting more off of our commanders or getting more off of what we're trying to innately do within the deck and trying to do it more often on our turns or more often scaling to the rest of the players is where we want to be. We don't want to have this. Um, so, yeah. 
stretch it, uh, stretch in time. Like, we want to take extra co uh, turns and combats and whatnot to an extent because that will mean that we can get through much more of our coin flipping and whatnot, which triggers on our combat. So that is useful for us. But again, I don't like this one-off effect. Um, so I just took it out. Uh, and the last one, Team of Battle Rage. Again, our Okun, which is the main thing we're going to be swinging with, doesn't really need Double Strike. It really needs Trample. Um, like, it, it, it does give things Trample also, but we don't really need the Double Strike. We'll already have enough power, so we really don't need Double Strike. The Trample is nice uh, on this, but we can get Permanent Trample, so I just don't really see this. Like, yeah, sure, oh, no one will know that it's coming. Haha, <laughs> here it is, you know, whatever. That whole thing, we can get people with it, but... Uh, I don't know, that's just me. I just think we should just be like, oh, okay, cool, we can do whatever, and we'll just get there anyway, eventually. So it really doesn't matter. Anyway, let's look through what I added. I only added one enchantment, which was Teferi's Age of Sin Sight, um, which draws us a card whenever we draw a card, except for the first one we draw in each of our draw steps. So that's pretty darn useful, especially with our commander, just getting more and more cards coming is really powerful. So we'll pay certainly four mana for that effect. Uh, the only sorcery that I added was Jaska's Will, and Jaska's Will, as we all know, is pretty darn dumb. Um, but yeah, it's really good, and we're mainly in red in this deck, um, which you can sort of see by the percentages of how like the deck runs out. So yeah, we're definitely very heavy red. Um, so it will may it may hit a few blue spells sometimes, but for the most part that's okay because we can still use it on colorless, uh, or the red mana that is on colorless. And if we exile three blue spells somehow, that's still okay. And that's why again, like this is a cantrip, but it's a cantrip that pays for itself for the most part, uh, and pays for the spells a lot of the time. It doesn't just give you cards that you can't, like, use. Like, and you do have to use them right away, but still, it gives you the mana to easily do that a lot of the time. It just gets you so far ahead. And even if you hit duds off the top, well, now you've got those three duds off the top. You know, you hit three lands or whatever. Okay, well, now I've dug three deeper and, you know, got rid of three lands in my deck. So... Yeah, I don't think there's any real downside to it. I only added one creature, which was the Reality Ship. Mm, let's us see the top card of our library. And while it's essentially equipped to something, we can cast spells from the top of our library. Gives us that innate card selection that we might be very lacking at certain times. And it can also inform us what we're trying to do and where we're trying to go next turn and things like that. But just giving us access to our library is just so powerful in decks like this. Like if we have a whole lot of extra mana floating around, we can just start casting things from our library much easier than we can cast things from our hand. It will give us so much more card advantage. Um... So in the instance, I added three cards, Wild Magic Surge, Resculpt, and Reality Shift. Just some really good removal. Uh, Magic Surge is any permanent. Resculpt is artifacts and creatures, and Reality Shift is just creatures. But still, Reality Shift and Resculpt are both, both Exile, and that's pretty darn good. Um, so yeah, those, those were the ones there. Uh, as far as artifact, I added four things. Uh, first, I guess, will be Helm of the Host. Just copies our commanders, mostly. Like, it can copy other things, but we're mostly looking at copying our commanders. Okun is good to copy, but so is Zender Split. Zender Split is good for cards. Okun is better if we're actually looking at like, we're close to winning, 
Um, so, but then again, like Okun is just so easy to win with anyway. So you can just copy Okun pretty darn easily and not really be too worried about it. Like Xander Split, it will just do his thing and will just draw you cards anyway. Um, so the main thing, I guess, would be protecting Okun. Um, and just having more Okuns is just better than having one. So you have fallback plans. Um, so yeah. Uh, next was Key to the City. We can discard a card and a target creature can't be blocked this turn. And when it becomes untapped, we can pay two. And if we do, we draw a card. So that's pretty darn good. We discard maybe, well, maybe we have to discard something good-ish. But we try to, we'll, you'll try to discard things that you don't need, like, or things that perhaps that you can get back with, say, Academy Ruins or something like that. Um, so that you can just be like, this does not affect me in the slightest. And even so, even if it does affect me in some slight way, well, it just doesn't matter enough because I'm going to smash people with Okun and kill people. So that's where I need to be. And at this point, it doesn't matter. And even if I don't kill everyone with Okun, perhaps, at least I continue to get card advantage and card selection and whatnot with it. So... You know, if you only kill one player with it or two players with it and get a couple cards off of it, it's still probably pretty good. Um, the others were Lithoform Engine. Now, Lithoform Engine does a whole lot of different things for us, but mainly it's here to copy target activated or triggered ability, um, which is mostly our commander's triggered abilities. But it can do a whole lot more for us. We can copy instant sorceries and top, copy other permanents as long as they're on the stack and whatnot. So, you know, that's that's really useful and can, you know, help us chug along into getting multiple, multiple different advantages in multiple different ways. Some that you can't even, like, fathom sometimes that would happen. Like, if I copy Teferi's Ageless Insight... Oh boy, it starts getting very interesting very quickly. Um, and Stryonic Resonator just to copies target activate uh, triggered ability that we control, and we choose new targets for the copy. So that's really powerful um, with our commanders, obviously, and that. So there's other ones that do sort of similarish things or whatever, but I thought that these were worth our time to look at, especially Lithoform. Um, but Stronic is, like, very cheap in terms of its mana cost, so that's really worth the time to look at. But Lithoform just does so many different things that it, it can really help with our commanders, but it can also really help with a whole lot of other things that we're trying to do with the deck. So those are the cards that I would look at adding at this deck at least. Um, there are other cards that do coin flip stuff and some other interesting cards. And also, if you're less on tutoring and stuff like that, you can get rid of some of the tutors. But obviously, you can always add more tutors. And if you're a person that knows how to build a good mana base or, you know, knows about, you know, fast mana and things like that, you can obviously cut some lands and things like that as well. But I still think that this is a pretty decent list to... Uh, go with it. It's a pretty decent deck. It's not too bad out of the box. And some of the cards that are here and there, you kind of scratch your head with and whatnot. And like, I'd like to add uh, Kedis in here so Okun hits everyone at the same time. Actually, I might, you could take Niv Mizzet out of this deck pretty darn easily, I would think, because yeah, though uh, our com one of our commanders does draw a lot of cards and whatnot. The other one you want to sort of do stuff with and hit people, so I don't know. Turning those card draws into damage is pretty darn good. So I don't know, that's it's still really powerful, so it's hard to say. The Stalwood, though, I will say I'm not a huge fan of that. I think you could get rid of that. That's one other card that I do think could be out of here. Um, and another couple cards that I will just say here that could be out of this are Spark Double and Sakashima. Some people might be like, that's sacrilege. But honestly, I, like, I'd like i rather have cards that do more for what we're actually doing than 
just being able to copy something of ours a lot of the time, or just put in um, Phyrexian Metamorph, Phyrexian Metamorph um, into this deck, um, because at least it's one cheaper. Yeah, sure, it doesn't copy uh, Legendary, so you're probably trying to copy your Commanders, so, eh, but still, that's still all right, I still think. But anyway, guys... There are a few cards here and there that you can let me know what you guys think and leave those thoughts down there in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, this is the last thing that I'm actually producing for this year uh, as well. So, hey, I uh, hope to see you all guys in the new year. I've got a little bit of stuff to lead us into the new year coming up on the channel, as you've sort of seen and will see over the next few days. Uh, but have a good one. Enjoy and hope to see you all in the new year.